Uh, today we have a special guest in the building, uh, Anwar Sadadek. So how did you, so my question is, um, I wanted to get to back to the, the origins of uh, Brand Nubian, because um, it, it was definitely part of my childhood and part of my upbringing. I was, I was yes. wearing, that's when you had the jabos, you went from an eye, oh, yeah. eye and I had to go taking it back, right? So <laughs> <laughs> um, what, um, how did you become a part of, uh, I mean, how did you become a part of Native Tunks? And well, the, we we was we like an auxiliary member of Native Tongues. Like people always grouped us in that, and I guess it was because of the message, and we was always cool with them. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say we was official members, but we were still connected. You understand okay. what I'm saying? Like we still had a lot of love, Jungle Brothers and Drez and Dela and Latifa mm-hmm. and Moon Love, and everybody connected with it. Our uh, Chi, mm-hmm. but you know, we were, I guess, being at the message and the music that we made and. Mm-hmm. that we was always around, you know, that, that, that people put it to us. But basically at that time, we was pretty much on an island of our own. You understand? Because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people didn't understand us at first. You understand? Mm-hmm. Like they didn't, they, they, they didn't know how to put us. You understand? Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't know. They thought we was hating on white people and it wasn't that. <laughs> we were just like, you know, <laughs> we, we just got to get our brothers right first. Right. And we're not hating on y'all, but our brothers are in such a state of despair in, 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 in turmoil that we feel that these are the people that we have to reach first. Mm-hmm. So what, so, so my thing is that you guys being of that, what I, what I was telling um, uh, my, my cousin earlier is that um, some people, you know, they sold out and, and you, and you guys never sold out. You kept your message strong. You had to make pivots and, and like, you had to make pivots in ways to like, you had to put certain tracks out to, to get the, get the audience. But then the meat of the project was always about awareness and positivity and building us up. Um, how did you walk that balance beam? I know like, I've seen you guys do stuff from slow down to punk strip up to get beat down. Y'all shot mm-hmm. that in Spring Street on the, on the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the subway or whatever. Um, but like, how did you, how did you walk that, that tight rope with that, um, you know? Well, we was making real music and actually at the time, you know, that was being promoted. You okay. understand? like. You listen to the radio, you would hear Jungle Brothers or you would hear KRS One or you know certain Rock Him joints, this or that. Like if if those songs came out now, they might not be played. You understand? Right. Like right. It, radio is, is such a fickle game where radio is basically phased out now. Like this whole system is a new system, but back then that was that that was played on the radio and was promoted. You had mm-hmm. certain DJs and people in power who came up with that music who were able to punch the buttons and, and, and put that music through. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sorry, yeah. So um, is, is, is the brand, is brand new being still together or you guys? Are oh the, yeah, we, we still do shows. I mean, we got a show. This, yeah, okay. yeah, all, yeah, we we got a show this week in Atlanta coming up for the music fest next week. We'll be at our North Carolina A&T homecoming. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to plug that one for you. Yep. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, I'll, be I'll, I'll, be there, I'll be out there. I'll be out there to show. <laughs> yeah, so you know, like we still got a slot, and and and, mm-hmm. and I tell like a lot of these kids, man, it's like, man, like you, you got to make something that's gonna stand the test of time, and you know, like a lot of our music has stood the test of time. Where I'm glad we're still afforded the opportunity to go and do shows. Mm-hmm. You know, I can still. In the, in the spring, go do two weeks in Europe. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And and, and do places abroad and, and places here. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been a good mixture. Right. So let me ask you one more question. I said, this is a double question, right? Two, yeah. two questions, right? Um, what do you think about verses? Um, I like the verses, man. It's, it's, it's a good thing, man. And, and it shows, you know, like the, the, the simple fact of the locks verse verse uh dip set you understand mm-hmm. that is it, it shows how being prepared is a plus you know what i'm saying and i love cam and them. trust me i i love jim and them. right absolutely yeah, it's my god yeah. absolutely yeah they gave it the they, they, locks, they, they, they they came ready that day. right absolutely you know and that's just not that's 914 yonkers you know right. what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's area code 914 and the boys you know they was ready you know they they, 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 they <laughs> were sharp, you know what I'm saying, and, and they and they proceeded to carve the turkey, yeah. you know what I'm saying, like they 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 went full throttle, Jadakus, and on all of them, like Styles, all of them, she like mm. they, they they elevated themselves a, another notch, like and and Jadakus, 
became thought of in a new light. Yeah, he became he became, he became really top five dead alive on that. Yeah, 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 exactly. On that moment right there, yes. But you, you know, big, big a trio, big a trio. You guys are actually. Yes, ain't the, nobody, the, ain't the, no trio back. I mean, I mean and I'm not just being be respectful, but yes. you guys were first. Come on now. Before them. Yeah. Yes. You know and, I mean? and, and, and they've told us that. See, yeah. that's the thing with them. They, Man, they, y'all they, they, trio they, was the first. I don't know any other trio before, before y'all, and, and it's going back in the I, day. Yeah, and when I see them, they always extend the most love. You understand? And, and, that, and that's how it's supposed to be. And on the same side, Cam and Jim and them show love, too. You right. know what I'm saying? So, you know, not, not, not to slight them. Right. Right, so so you don't see brand new being going against um, somebody else on the on the verse. Oh, oh, well, yeah, fire, fire, it, really fire. Fire. It, it would have to be, you know, and I would like to, but it would have to be somebody comparable to our era. Mm-hmm. Who do you, you think? Know, so? would have can to can I get a name? Can we get that, a name? Who you think? A group? Who I mean, and 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 being that we only made one album, so we would have to compile some stuff. But people on our they are so like different, like groups right. like mm-hmm. of that era. Right. You got to be a threesome, yeah. Like, Poor Righteous yeah. Teachers, like yeah. Brand New being Poor Righteous Teachers Ooh, would right. probably Ooh. be like, I would say the best verses. And it would be a, all love because I, I I love all them boys too. Jungle so, Brothers? But Jungle Brothers, like yeah. that would have to be the comparable verses. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. That'd be, mm-hmm. listen, I missed that. And, and what I was talking about was the battle rap, but the verses thing, yeah, like yeah, it's it would just have to be. Uh, it's really fire. Y'all all, yeah. listen, y'all all been in the studio. Y'all, y'all all yeah. grew up together basically in the music industry. It's just all just having fun. But I mean, definitely, that. I and, and see that. You, you got to be ready for that. Like for the for the simple fact, like you seen when the locks went up against uh Dipset. when with Cam and them, and I love both of them. But, but the boys, the locks, like you could tell they, they they put a couple of days of practice in. <laughs> you understand? They, 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 they drunk they, uh, you know, and that's water. part of being a professional yeah. and being always able to do shows. <laughs> And being ready at the drop of a dime, like them boys put some work in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiss, they kiss, did. kiss showed out. They all showed out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He, <laughs> he upped his value tenfold. Yeah. <laughs> he was already there. That, that just put him on a whole next level. No Shout out to Uptown. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Uptown. Um, another track I wanted to ask you about was because uh, my one of my favorite artists is Red Man. You did a track with Frankie Cutlass. You and you and you clap your hands. Um, how how did you how did that track come to form and how how'd you do that? Um, well, like uh, once again, like Frankie called me. Somehow he got my uh, my man from somebody. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know who was gonna be on the track. You know, mm-hmm. he just told me, "Yo, come to the studio. You know, we're gonna do this joint. Uh, I want you on it." I came down there and did it. Like that's how it usually went back then. Like yeah. you connect with somebody and they call you and y'all holler and you know you come on down and, and knock it out. You were actually managed by Lear Cohen. Yes, brand new being what? So so. Wow. That's that's big because a lot of people look at Leo Cohen on the Def Jam side, what he did with Jay Z, DMX, or whatever, and don't know that he was doing stuff before. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And I think I think when you had Electric too, Ty, um, uh, Moskowitz was was uh, just yeah, Tom Moskowitz and all of them. Yeah, yeah definitely. We, so so we can definitely you, yeah, had, give, me uh, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> well, we definitely had the management and uh, you know and um. One thing about management back then, see, nowadays you don't really see too much management like that. You do see it occasionally, but management also meant you you, you had A and R, yeah, artists and repertoire. Mm-hmm. So they were the people that taught you how to do interviews. You know what I'm saying? How to how to how to publicly speak? How to how to perform? How to right. how to go and do shows? You know, as opposed to now, like sometimes it takes some of these young boys. A, a little while to build up to that. You understand? Mm-hmm. Like I've seen mm-hmm. some of the young boys, they don't really know how to, you know, speak to people, you know, like um, being coherent, not going somewhere and being all twisted out where, you know, you, you, you're you looking bad, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You, whatever you do, you're going to do. But when the, when the spotlight is on, you got to be able to be coherent and uh, you got to let people see your best side. And that was, you know, Leon them with the management, as far as the management and A&R, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, they kept you on point. It's one thing I so I I know one of your mantras is karma, um, and also um, learning until you you know you're gonna learn till the day you yeah. die, um, and uh, you just I just learned from you I didn't know what A and R meant and I you know mm-hmm. and I'm a college grad and all that don't mean nothing, uh, I didn't know it meant artist and repertoire I just learned something yeah definitely that. yeah I appreciate that my brother no that question was, yeah you got it. yeah um so <clears throat> you have um a bunch of albums that you drop yearly, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Like Nas is starting to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, what inspired you just to drop the music just over and over again when everybody else is saying all the old timers or people that had music in the nineties need to give it up? 
Well, me basically, I, I think what, what what drives me is man, I still love hip hop. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like I still have a genuine love for it. I still love to go into the studio and do what I do. Um, I still love the music. I I hear somebody else do a song and I'm like, damn, I wish I would have did that. So, you know, I still have the drive for it, man. Plus, you know, when I do that, it keeps my lanes open. You know what I'm mm. saying? I got a lot of, you know, like I run around to different places. Like yeah. I tell people, never burn down the bridge because you might have to come across. So mm. it's, it's certain places I know when I put out something I can go do. I know I can go to jump on the bird and go to Berlin, go to uh, Bonn, go to Hamburg, go to mm. this place, go to Paris, go to Finland. So different places like Moscow when they stop fucking with the wall. And, uh, you know, like I know I can, I can, I can, I can run around, man, hop on that bird. So, you know, that, that, that keeps your lanes open. And in, in order to excel and, and not be categorized and, and put into an old box, you, you, you got to stay with it. And, and, and in being that stay with it, you don't have to embrace everything the young boys embrace because they're 20, 30, 40 years younger than you. And your lane is not going to be the same lane, but it's still people in your lane that still love hip hop and, and they want to be involved with it. And that's who you got to cater to. And if you get new fans along the way, that's the gravy. All right. So it's another question, right? And this just came to me, right? Um, do you think that the old school rappers might have got it wrong when they started tapering off in their 30s and 40s when they should have just kept going? Because I grew up in the same era you grew up in, mm -hmm. basically. You know what I mean? And I missed it, even though new stuff is coming out. But why not the other stuff? And this, it well, seems like everybody's like, they just, I'm done, like retiring. Like, why? This, this hip hop has no ceiling. It doesn't, you know, and hip hop is the only genre that sometimes tries to retire people. But there we go. It was a, it was a point in time, maybe from about, I say about from ninety seven to about two thousand six, two thousand seven, where, you know, they wasn't really trying to hear too many of of the of the older rappers, and a lot of them got frustrated with it. Man, they was you know you, they like yo these they don't respect what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And you know it's, it's it's no place for me. And they gave up hope. You know, th that was the years you had to navigate and, and still keep going. Those was the struggle years. Yeah. You know, they was the struggle years for everybody. Yeah. You know, they were struggle years for me. But that Wild Cowboy still, album, I remember that, boy. Yes. You still had to keep going and, and find your slot where mm -hmm. a lot of the older artists, they were used to getting catered to and mm -hmm. used to having things done. And when that didn't happen no more, they got disgruntled. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you got, Kyle? Um, So... My thing, my thing is that so I love I love the era I love a certain era of hip hop. What is your best era of hip hop from being an artist, not from being an artist and also as being a fan of the music? Was it the eighties, nineties, two thousands? My my best era probably would be maybe from about like when I put out the Wild Cowboy album. That was probably like I would say, well I would uh, encompass the from about maybe about ninety. Mm -hmm to about 2000, 2001, that was my best era for me because that was, you, you know, before a lot of the music started getting manipulated. Towards the end of the 90s, you know, it started it started changing, you know, radio started uh, getting weird, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. you know, different things, uh, you know, diff uh, you had to, you know, payola started, they say it ain't no payola, but it was, and you know, like it, it, it started being, a thing of everybody wanted to be somebody, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like gotcha. it wasn't no more fans. Everybody felt that they had a place, whether you got to be an A and R, you got some beats, you mm -hmm. you got you got some shirts, some hats. Mm -hmm. Everybody felt that they they needed to be in in the pole position instead of just being a fan and appreciating the music. Mm. Right. So so with 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 that said, um with with that going on, um how did you? How did you? How did you pivot in that situation? Like, how did you guys pivot? Like, I know, I know, I know you have a, the single, which one was actually one of my favorite singles. Your, your album "Foundation" is my joint, but like um, your single "Don't Let It Go to Your Head" now. Give me, give me your mind state. Give me your, you know, what we, what was going through the group brand newbie at that time. And I, and I, and I know, I think, um, I, well, I know Grand Pooba had left the group for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but like, what was going on with you know what what was that time like? Well, at that time, you know, when we when we put out that foundation album, mm -hmm. we had come back together. Mm -hmm. So um, we we figured that we still had to make something for our core. Mm -hmm. You understand? We still had to 
connect with the people that was where that was there with us from the beginning. And like I said, if, if we gain new fans, we gain new fans, but we, we, we couldn't go outside of the realm. Like, you know, that was the beginning of like the, 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 the watered down era, shiny suit era per se. Right. Um, when people were trying to, you know, do, do music to cater, you know, to, to other than themselves, we still had to remain ourselves. And, uh, we were like, if we're going to do this, we still got to be true to this and do how we do. So that's how that came about. Got it. All right, listen. This is this is for the homies. This is for Mahalo, Mahalo Bros and NJ, right? What was it like being Sadat X at the prime? At the peak. At the peak, bro. At the peak. Come on. Let me come bro, on. Give me I some mean, sauce. And, and I want I want I want I need to hear and it. I, and I want and I want to hear it. You I might want, need to drink a shot. I, I don't know if you drink a wine over there, because I know you got right. the liquor. <laughs> But come on, we but, need and I also oh, want to. I also want to hear how it was to pull up a one twenty fifth and bro. And, 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 oh, yeah, well, prime. Uh, come on. At, at the prime of brand newbian, it was it was still bosses out. You mm-hmm. understand? You still had like unique. You had a uh, rich. Mm-hmm. You had Alpo. Mm-hmm. You had Supreme yeah. Team. Mm-hmm. You had all them boys from Queens. Mm-hmm. So you would see them, and they would be fans. Poe was running around, you know, like and 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 you would actually see them and interact with them because those would be the dudes that sometimes paid you to come do a show. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, that arrow, it was, it was, uh, and, and that was everywhere. You had them boys in DC, you go do a show in DC for these dudes, or right. Baltimore for these dudes, Philly for these dudes. And these was boss dudes that were still running around, whether good or bad, you understand? Mm-hmm. It, it was, you know, they was doing what they do, but mm-hmm. that was the era of you could actually still see like, these these legends and 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 pe- and things that people talk about and mm-hmm. and, and uh, Carlton Hines and the boy George, mm-hmm. I know like boy George, oh, man, you you know, to, to 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 be running around with them boys like boy George was driving to school in the Rochelle, like he was in the group home in seventh eighth grade with a car, so you know to to actually be around that like and like I said that was the height of the crack era. It was it was a lot of money mm-hmm. going around. It was a lot of money all over the city. Right. That's you know that that era spawned bosses, but that era also broke down the society in a yeah, way. But I would say from about the golden years, shoot, from about eighty eight to about ninety two, ninety three, mm-hmm. it was it was unbelievable. You going forty fifth, you know what I'm saying? Cars parked sideways. You going hundred twenty fifth right. street, the cars is parked sideways. Dudes is donutting in the street doing wheelies and. You know, um, see Alpo come down the block and Rich and AZ right. Gangsta Lou and all of them. Like these right. is people that you actually knew. You understand mm-hmm. it? It was your contemporaries because they was the same age as I was. You know right. what I mean? Like, to, so you know, you was connecting with them. A dude, them boys coming out from Detroit, and it was you know, they, it was it, it was crazy. Oh man, I could believe it. All them roundaway girls is running up in the hotel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> you know that was that was. That was the era before, right before the groupie term came about. Right. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you had a couple of years before the groupie term, and then when it was groupie, like they ain't really want to rock like that too much mm-hmm. no more. But like right. it was it was it was golden, man. I mean, and that was the era when you were still doing like I remember we do we, we used to do shows. It might be brand new being Ice Cube, Yo Yo, MC Breed. And the Jungle Brothers, mm. you know what I'm saying? They don't really do shows mm. like that no more, man. Right. And, you know, you might do that show in Greensboro, right. or or you might do that in Richmond, Virginia. You understand right. what I'm saying? So you do that shows, and the hotel would be packed, the after party would be packed, and it was it was like an event. Like you get down to the city, you go to the mall, you get fly, right. you go eat somewhere, you be in the city, go to the record store. It was it was an event. Right. Let me ask you something. For some reason, right, um, I have a lot of friends, right? I have a lot of friends, but they swore up and down you was from Brooklyn. And I know you're from New Rochelle, maybe a little Bronx there, right? Yeah, right? basically Bronx, huh? Right. But, I lived in Brooklyn for 15 years, though. Definitely was in the cave. Right. But you know what? The gold fronts, the ball yeah. head, you had the you had the whole swag, like, and everybody mm-hmm. was like, hey, you from Brooklyn? I'm like, no, he's not. But they swore up and, and down you was from Brooklyn, bro. And, and see, that was a good thing about us being brand new, being... Because you know, and us being brand new, being we 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 also was connected with the guards. Mm-hmm. And see, the guards was in every borough. Mm-hmm. You understand? So we might come to Brooklyn and do a show, mm-hmm. and the guards were like, "Yo, we 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 gotta we, we gonna be with y'all, and we gonna make sure y'all like." And even when we thought, even when we was like, "Yo, we good," they was like, "Nah." So 
we we was going through projects in Brownsville, Seth Lowe, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, right. Browns, yeah, or out in Queens or whatever. <laughs> right. So we had a different type of element. Like we was able, you know, because back then, like some groups couldn't go everywhere, mm. you understand, and, and be safe mm. or, or have jewelry on and be safe. W- with us, thank thankfully for what we was promoting in the music, we were good everywhere. And I mean everywhere. We, we might go in Newark and be good. Right. Or, 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 or Philly or Boston and be good with, with, with real live dudes from the city. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Now, y'all you was know? love, man. Y'all was love. You have no idea. I don't want to get too crazy, but I know all my homies right now, and we deep. We use a lot of us, man. And So, so Sadat, we usually do a um, we usually do a health segment. Um, last one we did was about mental health. Um, um, I'm aware that you uh, work at a hospital. Uh, uh, you, you you do with uh, you deal with sterilization for you doing patient transport. Can you touch on that because it's very important what you do. I know uh, and I and I want to tie that into this segment. It's always I always I'm big on health of all people. Well, what I do is I'm a sterile processing technician, and what that entails is basically, you know, we get the instruments ready for surgery. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like we get them ready beforehand, and when they when they come down after surgery, we got to clean them. And make sure that it's not on them, uh, you know. And, and it's a, it's a, it's a very, um, it's a process to doing it. Yes, like, it is. I went to school for it, you know. I, so I know a little bit, about, a little bit about. Yes, yeah, so, you know, you, you, um, it, you, you take pride in it because you know I clean, I make sure that everything is clean. Like if I was using it on my mom's, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. So you know, because I'm using it on somebody else, mom's or somebody wife or somebody sister or daughter or whatever. So. Right. You know, I try to give her my utmost respect on, on, on that part of it, man. And, you know, um, a lot of times we don't really get too much respect because we downstairs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're we not really visible. But, uh, you know, it's a vital part of the function of the hospital system. I promoted it because at some point it became like if you worked, that wasn't a good thing. Yeah. You understand? And, and, and I was like, well, you know, the working man is an honorable man. You understand? You working, you taking care of your family, you paying bills. Like, what's more honorable than that? You understand? And also, in working, it's going to build you up a pension plan and you're going to have health benefits. Because, see, like, what's going to happen in about five to ten years coming up is a lot of rapper dudes, you know, and that 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 didn't take these steps. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when, when they start getting tight, you're going to have to have some type of fallback because, you know, you do have some form of pension and rap, you know, whatever, but it's not no real, real thing like that. You're going to need a real pension and real health benefits. Mm-hmm. I'm doing that now. Enjoy it. You mm-hmm. know, and I work from seven to three. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um, from them hours, basically, if I wasn't working, I wouldn't really be doing too much within them hours anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's an easy hustle. I'm doing that. I'm building up. I've been there about five years now. I'm vested. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm building up a pension. You mm-hmm. understand? And I'm still doing the music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everything, right. you know, we was taught, you know, by the gods that, you know, you got to do the knowledge. Like, everything mm-hmm. is a hustle. You understand? Yeah, you got to have some type of hustle or con to survive these days. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. just being one way, that's that's not going to do it Never anymore. Gonna like, do it. You, Never going to do it. You need a hustle. If you were a partner, both of y'all need to be working and bringing in some type of income. That's just the way this country is set up right now. Right. Yeah. How many times we've had people in our lives that have had operations and they've had infections and operations yeah. have been worse. It, it, it makes the situation worse. So it's very important that your job is very important. Um, yeah. Definitely. What I want to what I want to talk, touch on too is Doughboy, Science of Life. You linked up with him in uh in, in Raleigh. Um, he's from California, I believe, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, mm-hmm. How did that project happen? How'd that well, I met Doe Boy down here. We we connected and he had a pop-up event and we connected and uh you know he was a fan of mine and uh you know he was like you know if you ever want to make some music let's get together mm-hmm. and um I wanted to do that I'm uh what it was is you know I wanted to get a different see with me I'm willing to take direction that's also a lot of thing with a lot of the older artists mm-hmm. they don't feel that they need to take direction mm-hmm. you understand they're like well yo, I've been doing this for this long and I know how to do it and sometimes you need to broaden your space and get a different perspective. You can still keep keep your lead into it, but you know you got to listen to outside forces sometimes to know what's going on. Gotcha. And he was an outside ear, and you know we, um he connected me with a lot of the younger producers that was able to cater something that I could rock to. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like they they was able to make a beat that I could 
that I felt comfortable with rhyming on and and doing it. And we we, we made a great album. Uh, it got a lot of love, and we are we we we're making a part two. I just did a song with our Baron Davis basketball mm. Baron Davis. You know, uh, which, that's what's okay. Up. <laughs> okay. Actually, Baron is pretty nice. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what's up. You know, that's like, that was a, that was just another angle for me to keep going. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. Listen. Um, we gotta probably tape, taper it down. This is our this is our first podcast that we had with somebody on. Yeah, our first um, interview, yeah. Um, virtual, right? Yeah. So we don't know how long it's gonna record. So I'm gonna say this. Uh I gotta get some juicy stuff. When you Lord listen, I know all y'all, all y'all was you, Lord Jamal, um, Grand Pooba. Grand y'all Pooba. was individually high. In the yeah. hotels with the ladies. Come on, give me some spice, man. Oh, well, you come know, on, now. I'm like, 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 please. But I, I, come on, I ain't gonna beg on the camera, but trust me, we we, we did our running through. We did, we definitely did our running through. Like, I'm not even gonna lie on that. We we never had a problem on that. Side. You know, like it was always good. You know, but as, it was as you always know, good. you learn and you, you, you backtrack sometimes, and you meet people that you met 30 years ago, and it's like, oh wow, like, oh. You know, right. like in, in this. It's a beautiful thing, man. That's why I said, like, I, if I wouldn't change anything, man, but mm. you live like to the fullest. You understand? Well, yeah, so you, you and Jamal were actually. I was redoing my research. You and Jamal were actually uh, hotel, hotel buddy, but not, you know, like you guys were bunkies. Room, roommates. Yeah, we. And Alamo we, we, and Alamo we was bunkies. Yeah. We was bunkies, and to a point where we was able to get to a point where everybody got their own room. Mm-hmm. See, at okay. first when we mm-hmm. came out, you had to double up or whatever. Mm-hmm. But as you went along, everybody got their own room at at, at a certain point. You know, right. but like I said, man, like we had a lot of, lot of, lot of adventures. A lot of, I'm not. Hold on, who was lacking though? Who, anytime that you, you said who was lacking, who was lacking? Come on, give me some time. Was Lord Jamal like, like, listen, <laughs> like, like, I gotta get some juice, man. Was Lord Jamal? Yeah, well, I, I, hey. You know what? And I know, listen, I don't know Lord Jamal, but I can tell by his energy. He's not gonna if he don't feel it, he ain't gonna play with it anyway. Yeah, well, he never lacked for anything. That's what I'll say. He never lacked. For anything. <laughs> it was, was a beautiful thing. You know what? That was a three piece that you can't. Listen, y'all just y'all just ran circles around them, and that was it. That was yeah, it. like we 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 had a good run, man. Like I I'm I'm not gonna throw nobody under the bus, but like we we, we, we definitely did <laughs> yeah, our we, shit. We, we didn't do that. So we 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 do a no cap. Our our podcast is based on no cap or whatever. I know it's a it's a, it's a young term, and we know we're we're not. Man, saying, you but, capping already, bro. Yeah, it's it's cap, right? So one thing I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna give you. Uh, I, I want to run run four things by you. And it's cap or no cap, but you know we're not gonna. I can't cap you, you know you're you're <laughs> you're, you're you're one of our idols. But um, Gore-te- Gore-Tex or Timbs? Um, damn, it was an <laughs> era of both. You understand? It was an yeah. era of both. Got I would one. have to go with Timbs, so I got to keep it with Timbs. Timbs. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Scullies or or the or the or the fitted baseball hats? Definitely. Once again, two errors. But I would I would have to say you know judging now the fittings definitely fittings okay Lacoste no no Polo or Hill figure I would well I would you know I would, I'm I'm gonna go with low every time I'm gonna keep it with Ralph on that side all day Yankees and Mets oh you already see what it is you understand that's okay. the PX right there the Yankees yeah. you see the well, statue yeah, all right so of, listen I'm he part, got no cap. I'm he got of, no cap. I'm part of yep. I'm part of I'm part of the cocaine Mets era. So I'm, I'm with Daryl Sparrow right. and Dwight Good. <laughs> no doubt, Daryl. Yeah, Daryl Dwight. You know, I understand. Yeah. Mike Tyson is Zab Jr. Oh well, I, Zab is a, is, is a great friend of mine. But Mike, Mike was Mike was a part of that era of hip hop. Like Mike was a main figure. You go uptown and see Mike at 55th. Mike come out with the with the motorcycle or the cars or, or with the tiger or something. Mike was definitely and see a lot of people don't know like Mike. Used to be in Latin quarters and them places like that as, a, as, as a young dude. Like Mike was the knockout man. Mm-hmm. Like so, you know, Mike was definitely an integral part of hip hop. Awesome. And last one is you rock a sweatpants. You keeping a leg up on a on a right on a right or left leg, or you you know you you, you rocking it the leg up, or you rocking the leg down with the Gore Tex. Wait a minute. I always rock the leg down. You wild, bro. You wild. I get the cap on. Cap that man, bro. Cap that man, bro. Yeah, the Queens dudes kept one leg up. What's wrong with you, bro? I always always kept mine down. Come on, Sadat. You already know we don't play that. Yeah, you know. Brother, brother Sadat, thank you so much for um uh doing this interview with me and um and my my cousin. Uh, we're very blessed to talk to you. I will, I will definitely be at A&T Homes coming to meet you. Uh, okay. So Dot will be performing. 
uh, brand new. We'll be performing at Auntie's Homecoming uh, coming up uh, the first week of November. So we're going to plug that for you, but I'll definitely be able to meet you. But, De brother, thank you so much for doing this interview. I, I, I'm a fan. I, uh, you're, you're one of my role models, and I'm very humble to even to – even, the, mo the most valuable thing in life is time. Definitely. And, 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 you, and you've given me time – for me to interview you, interview Absolutely. you and tell your story for both of us. You have no idea. So much. Thank Thank behind so much. the scenes, I talked to you, bro. You were like, damn, that song was that crazy. Y'all was doing that to that song? Like, <laughs> all right, all right, that's what's up. Appreciate the Hollow Boys didn't play no games. Trust me, bro. Thank you so much, brother. You have a blessed night and you take care of yourself. And I'll see you soon. Hey, Sadat, one Appreciate more it. thing. One more thing. One more thing. Anything you want to, uh, anything that you're doing, marketing, anything yeah. like that? Um, well, you know, like I'm on, I'm on the gram and, you know, Sadat X just coming to my gram. I'm, I'm working on new music constantly. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, Brand new being is still up and running. We still doing shows. Just follow us, mm -hmm. and we here. All right. What about the What about the wine? Is that still in action? Oh yeah. Well, we rebranding on the wine. We should have a rebrand possibly by the, the top of the year. That's what we shooting for. Mm -hmm. The okay. top of the year. We we've been in it for a while. You know, we had some ups and downs. We learned, and uh, now we're gonna rebrand and, and and come back better than ever. And and the guy that did the wine, I think. If I'm not mistaken, is the one that created the, pol the teddy bear for Polo. Yeah, he created yeah. the teddy wow. bear. Yeah. The, the, oh, you all the way. You getting yeah. that low and low price. <laughs> yeah, real tell. You already know. No doubt. Very well Peace studied, all my little brothers. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, founders, this and, and Thurs. And, Shout and out to Rudy my man, and, Rude, man. And He's a low and skin, He's everybody. A low and, you know, Disco and everybody that's connected with that whole line of things. Big Boo and whoever I miss, man. Like, that's that's the family. And that's who put me on in love, two L's to low life. All right, no doubt. Hey, yo, check it out. The Wild Cowboy, Charlotte on the scene. No cap, the Wild Cowboy. Hey, baby, punks jump up to get beat down. Come on, my folks, come on. You already know, 199, the great Sadat X, one of one, no duplicates. Damn. Hey, thank you, brother. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. No thank you so much. Thank you so much, brother. Oh.